Good morning guys and welcome back to Thai Talk with Dan. It's currently 7am here in Buriram, Thailand. Now a couple of days ago I, I posted a video from a subscriber called John who let everybody know that he had unprotected sex with a Thai bar girl from Krabi, Thailand. Now he explained that he got her tested the very next day and everything come back negative and he also takes a PREP prep um, as well to reduce the, ri the risk of catching HIV. So John has decided to email again and send us all in a part two of his story. So let's roll the intro and let's get on with the rest of John's story with a bar girl in Krabi, Thailand. Right, welcome back. Let's jump straight in, guys. All right, Dan. Thanks for not using my full name on the last video. I've read the comments on that video and I'm not in a relationship with this girl. We talk on video calls and message regular though. She is currently in Samiri doing massage training and yes, I am aware she could be going with customers as well even if she's quit the bar. But like I said in the last email, I've kept my distance emotionally so I'm not asked if she does she needs to eat. It's not like I expect a good relationship with a bar girl or for, former bar girl. I wouldn't get with any of the street whores that hang around the back streets near strange ways either. Anyway, since getting back to the UK end of November, I matched with a pretty Asian girl on Tinder. Turns out she lives in Bangkok, not central, at the end of the Sucumbit BTS line. She's a chef in, in a hotel in the Sucumbit area. I know the hotel as I've passed it many times. I won't say the name, but it's not far from Soy Cowboy. I know this to be true because when we have video chats, her work clothes have the hotel name on the breast and she's given me a video call tour of her kitchen. When we first matched, matched, I asked if she worked the bars and she lost her shit and got really offended. I got her line ID and we've been chatting once a day. If I'm in work and when I'm off twice as I work shifts, so speak before and after she's at work when I'm off and just after if I'm in. She does 4pm till 1am and takes around an hour for her to get home on her scooter with the shitty BKK traffic which is perfect as I finish at 6.30pm when I'm on days and get home at 7, same time as her. Working six days a week and only having Mondays off and two children, she's a busy girl but makes time for video calls of over an hour. She has to get up in the morning, take the kids to school after preparing their food for the day evening, goes home, sleeps a little more, then gets ready for work, and her friend picks the children up. On her day off, she's cleaning, goes to the market, washing clothes, etc. So she is a grafter, with very little time for any sort of fooling around. She is definitely legit. She told me what she earns a month. I was thinking, for fuck's sake, I get that in a day, but obviously didn't say anything. I'm back in April and she has booked a week from work to spend time together and see how we get on. I asked if there was anywhere in particular she wanted to go because she doesn't get around town due to her schedule. She said the usual Thai sentence, up to you. A few minutes later she said there was a place she wanted to go, Kosan Road. Aha, buzzing, I love the place. She has told me in the past she gets drunk easier and I'd have to take care of her if we go out drinking. She recently went out after work for a friend's birthday for Thai barbecue and called me before she went home. Mate, she was steaming. Couldn't get any sense out of her. 
when we spoke the next day, I asked her I plan on taking her around Bangkok, the palace, Wat Po, Lumpini Park, the river, etc. Nothing extravagant, just exploring the city. She's found a hotel not far from her room and wants me to stay there so it's easier for her to see me once the kids are at school. As if I stayed around ASOC like I normally do, it would be a big commute. She said she wants to cook for me and look after me while I'm there. Obviously, I'll pay for food and drinks like a man should on any date first meeting, but I won't be throwing the money around. Her English is limited, but better than my non-existent Thai, but we managed to communicate. Like you say in your videos, the chances of meeting a legit girl with morals and a work ethic in a bar are very slim. This girl has moved to Bangkok from South Thailand for job opportunities and is a genuine grafter. Always has a smile on her face and makes me laugh every time we speak. Always look forward to returning to the kingdom and get giddy like a kid at Christmas when I touch down at Bangkok. Looking forward to spending time with her even though I'm not expecting any you know what in just a week. I do get there five days before her week off so may go to Samui or Krabi for a few days before meeting her. I'll have three weeks in Thailand, so we'll be able to travel around after she returns to work. Hopefully, it goes well, and I'll let you know after our week together how it went. Take it easy, pal, and happy new year. Hey, it's like John on tour. Goes from Krabi over to Bangkok, changes his spec, goes from a bar girl to a normal working girl. So hopefully everything goes well, fingers crossed for you, John. So guys, what do you think about John's story? Now, dating in Thailand can be extremely safe. Like I say, as long as you keep your money in your pocket, you're fine. Go and meet, go and have some dinner, have a few drinks, see how you get on. You've got an hotel that's pretty close to her, so more than likely you will get a little bit of Hanky panky John. So I wouldn't worry about that too much, but this time make sure you adopt safe sex. Now, as always, if you would like to share your story on the channel, please send me an email in to tytalkwithdan at gmail.com and we can feature your story on the channel. Right, I'm going to go and get some breakfast now, have a few more coffees, wake up, get fully charged and start my day and get out of my Hugh uh, Hefner pyjamas. Okay guys, thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in. This has been Tie Talk with Dan and I'll see you again next time.